Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you an awesome new way to frag coral at home that doesn't require hundreds and hundreds of dollars buying a bandsaw and is so much easier than probably the clippers that you might already have as part of your home fragging arsenal. <laughs> So I do a fair bit of fragging at home, um, whether it's soft corals or LPS or SPS, there's different techniques for fragging different corals. And for the home gamer, generally your fragging arsenal consists of some pretty basic tools, maybe a razor blade, some um, flat clippers like these or bone cutters or something similar. And you know, maybe if you're doing something a bit bigger, a hacksaw, which is not exactly ideal. And you might be aware that uh, local fish stores and coral uh, propagators and uh, anyone with really serious fragging needs will probably use something like a bandsaw. Uh, the Griffin bandsaw is the most popular one uh, in the hobby that I've seen, but those cost upwards of $1,000 or more, sometimes multiple thousand dollars for other brands and the really, really good ones. And they're just not practical for uh, a home user or a hobbyist to have a bandsaw lying around for the odd time that they frag a coral. But if you're like me and you've been relying on a tool like this for the majority of your fragging needs, you'll find that sometimes these don't really cut that well. They're great for SPS or small cuts or the more brittle corals, but as soon as you try and frag something like Euphilia, where there's big, thick, dense skeleton, or Duncan's where the strength of the skeleton just is insane and it doesn't matter how big your bone cutters are, it just doesn't seem to want to cut through them without putting way more pressure and force on than you might feel comfortable doing. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be a really good way other than a hacksaw to be able to cut those bigger corals. And a, a hacksaw is just not ideal. Uh, in the past, I've fragged up a hammer using uh, a hacksaw or a jeweler's hacksaw and it took forever. The coral was out of the water for far longer than I wanted. I got halfway through the cut and it became increasingly more difficult. And I ended up just using a flathead screwdriver at that point to wedge into the cut that I'd already made and crack the piece apart. But then you're left with a very uh, random chance, uneven break point that might not be ideal. So I came up, I, I've been racking my brain looking for a better solution. There's got to be something in the middle ground between an expensive bandsaw and your standard uh, cutters or bone cutters like this. And I think I've found one. So this is a rotary tool with an extension arm attachment and a cutting disc on the end. I bought this tool. The brand is um, a Zito. It, it was 50 bucks at Bunnings and it came with 46 different attachments to the end of the, the handle. And essentially the one that I was really interested in is the cutting attachment like this, which is a, a, a solid disc that you can use for cutting almost anything. I, they advertise the, 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 the normal use case for this particular attachment is cutting the ends off screws, right? So that's cutting through metal. So if it can cut through metal, I'm pretty sure it can cut through coral skeleton. Um, and for 50 bucks with the 46 attachments, it includes this stand and everything and the arm, all the accessories, everything you need. I thought that was really, really good value. You might be familiar with the brand Dremel. Uh, I think they popularized this style of tool, the what's known as a, a rotary tool. Uh, the Dremel branded version of, the, of, of this tool costs more like 150 to $250, depending on which version you go for. But, uh, and that was a bit rich for my blood considering that I only wanted it to cut coral and I don't frag that much. But when I noticed that there was the, uh, this brand uh, for 50 bucks, I was like, hell, why not give it a go? I'm, I'm, for 50 bucks, I'm definitely uh, willing to, to invest that much in making my life easier when fragging coral. And on top of that, it came with a three year warranty. So it can't be that crappy, right? <laughs> Even if it does break, a three-year warranty gets you covered for a pretty long period of time for a $50 tool, in my opinion. So what I've got and what I want to show you and illustrate here today is I've got this Duncan, which is looking really sorry. It's uh, 
It's been very neglected. It's been stung. It's been in the back corner of my old tank. Uh, I was very close to actually throwing it out. But there are about five heads on this Duncan that are still alive. Just there's a heap of dead skeleton that makes the whole thing look ugly. So what I'm planning to do is use this tool to frag up this Duncan, cut away all the dead skeleton, get down to just the living heads, and then re-glue them together in a configuration that looks quite nice, put it on a frag plug and give it every chance to recover and, and, and do really well. Duncans are a very hardy coral and are well known for being able to come back from, you know, very, very poor and sorry states of near death to become full, rich, living corals again. So I'm hopeful that I can achieve that on this particular coral. And I think it's a perfect example and test case for this tool because if you've ever tried to cut a Duncan apart with something like these, you'll know it is incredibly difficult. So yeah, uh, I've got everything I need here. I'm gonna be wearing gloves and because this is you know, a fast spinning rotary tool, uh, I'm gonna wear eye protection as well because you know, there is the possibility of a tiny chip of uh, coral skeleton flying off and I don't want that in my eyes. Also, um, because of the way that this cuts, it's, it's almost like um, sanding through the material at extremely high speed. It might create some dust in the air, so I'm gonna wear a face mask as well. But uh, that's just general PPE that you should wear no matter what you're fragging. Even if you're just using a razor blade and fragging up zoas, you've gotta contend with things like palytoxin and stuff like that. So when fragging, always wear the appropriate, you know, safety equipment and whatnot. I guess what I'm hoping to achieve out of using this tool as an advantage over any of the other methods is absolute accuracy and a perfectly flat and straight cut. Because of the pen-like apparatus that this is, you're gonna be able to cut exactly where you want. And, and ideally, um, you know, if, even if you're fragging something like acans or chalice corals or uh, favias, where you wanna cut in between individual heads and things like that, it's going to give you so much more accuracy than these type of um, cutters would ever allow you to do and prevent that situation where you're just cutting, 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 cutting and knowing that the coral is going to break apart and then just hoping that the break goes in the right direction or goes between the heads. And inevitably, more often than not, it doesn't. It'll snap apart and go straight through a polyp that you otherwise wouldn't have wanted to cut in half. So. That's what I'm hoping we can achieve with a tool like this. And yeah, I wanna share it with you and, and the journey that we're gonna go on. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. This will be my first time using it. Hopefully it turns out well. All right, so this is now spinning and you can control the speed. I'm gonna go with a medium speed to begin with and we'll see how that goes. And the first cut that I wanna make is just through here. So one thing to note with these cutting discs is they can be quite brittle unless you get a metal one. This one is ceramic. Um, so you can get metal ones, I just don't happen to have one of them. But uh, to prevent them breaking, it's best not to do the deep the cut the whole way through from one side. So I've just now rotated it and I'm gonna do the other half of the cut from the other side. Rotate and just cut from the other side now as I just cut through where my, my two cuts now join and then this will coral will fall away any second now. Only like a millimeter of material now holding the two halves. There we go. And you can see that that is like a really smooth cut through what's otherwise incredibly hard skeleton. And you can just use it like a sanding tool to just get that fur off and make it perfectly flat. There we go. So it's that easy. Um, I'm really happy with that. As you can see, that was pretty quick, very accurate 
very easy and I've just cut a perfectly straight line through this incredibly hard skeleton on this Duncan. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep cutting away and cut off all the rest of these dead heads and get it to just down to the, the living heads on this poor Duncan and uh, I'll show you the end result once I'm done. So yeah, I'd say this probably isn't the quickest way, to, it's certainly not the quickest way to frag, but it is very easy and it's very accurate and precise. So, you know, if you just take your time, you know, we're talking maybe two to three minutes per cut, but, you know, for the, the home fragger, that's nothing. And to get this level of accuracy and control as compared to the, the cutters, I think it's well worth it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. See, I'm just getting these perfectly flat cuts, um, which, yeah, I'm really happy about. It's going to make it really easy to glue these heads back together once I'm done. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, all of this is dead skeleton, so uh, there's nothing else to recover from this particular piece. But I've got uh, three more living, four more living heads on this piece that I'm going to get off. Um, now there's a lot to cut through on this piece. Let's see, where's the best way to tackle it? I think we will, it's probably gonna be quicker or easier to cut off the living heads rather than to cut off the dead heads because uh, the dead heads are all this section here, which is one big blob. The living heads are these separate ones here, so they'll be able to be removed quite easily. So let's do the outside one here first. Again, I've gotten about 90% through, I think, and so I'm just gonna just pry it. There we go. That last little piece. Done. In the water. cut through all of that. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is, how have I ever fragged any other way? <laughs> like, I'll never go back. It's, honestly, this is so easy and quite fun. So, like, as you can see, it's not super, super rapid, but it's, it's so easy and so accurate, and you've just got confidence that you're cutting perfectly straight and exactly where you want to, and you can avoid the flesh, and yeah, just take your time with it. No, this is great. For 50 bucks, I'm very pleased with the result here. So what I've just done is hacked apart what was left of the dead skeleton um, a little bit more, and I've flattened the bottom end of it, and I've made these one, two, three, four, five, six mounting points that are perfectly flat. and. You know, I also cleaned off a little bit of the algae, again, just using this to kind of just scrape it and clean it um, while it's spinning, and it just did a phenomenal job. Um, and yeah, and what I'm gonna do is glue all of my uh, live Duncan heads back onto this skeleton, but there'll be a live head on every one of these endpoints, and then I'm gonna glue this onto a frag plug, and I think it'll look really nice, and hopefully the live Duncan, uh, when I treat it well and put it on my frag rack and give it a bit of love, it's going to uh, re-encrust at least back over the joins, not the whole skeleton, and then you know start growing new heads from this. But I think from where we started with all this mess to where it's about to be, um, you know, all this bit as well, uh, I think it'll look really good. So let me just do some super gluing and uh, I'll show you the end result. All right. 
right, so here's the end result. Um, obviously, it's not the most attractive Duncan you've ever seen, but bear in mind, this is like the next day after all of that cutting and gluing um, back onto the stem of the dead skeleton. And uh, yeah, there's some polyp extension on, the, on those living polyps, as you can see there. And, and Duncan's are certainly a resilient coral, so I have ho high hopes for this to be able to um, come back to life and start growing and maybe even re-encrust over the joins and the super glue where I've glued it back together. Um, but yeah, in terms of just as, an, as a little experiment here and um, testing the theory for a new technique for fragging, uh, I'm completely and utterly sold. Uh, I'm never gonna frag any other way um, for any type of LPS and probably even some of the bigger SPS or any thick coral skeleton that I need to cut through. Uh, this rotary tool is certainly the way to go. I'll put a link down in the description to where I bought it from. I just got it from Bunnings from 50 bucks. But uh, yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you've got any hot tips on, on ways that you would um, frag at home, um, feel free to let me know down below. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. My name is Marcus. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.